Many of the guests that come here ask about the Katrina Dolphins. They've followed them throughout their lives. We have a website where they can see the animals, they can catch up on the animals. We continually bring them in here to tell them about the animals. Atlantis has always been involved in ocean conservation and interested in animal and ocean uh, creatures. The dolphins that were involved, they saw an opportunity to help out. And the marine mammal community came together. Atlantis was a big contributor. They got involved in a very early stage and said, we will help move some of these animals into facilities that we will put together to house these animals. They need rescued and we're here to help. It was quite a drama. In August 2005, a Category 5 hurricane formed in the Bahamas, made its way through the Gulf, and smashed into Mississippi. The resulting destruction was incredible, and unfortunately, right in the path of that huge storm was one of the only marine mammal oceanariums in that area. The facility they were in got smashed apart, literally torn apart. There was real devastation there, right on the coast, and because it was a coastal facility, the animals that survived got washed out to sea. Many of these dolphins suffered some horrendous injuries. Their building collapsed on top of them. For a week afterwards, nobody knew what happened to the animals, and it took quite a rescue effort to find them all and get them all back into a safe place. Facilities offered support from all over the country. The United States Navy was involved. National Marine Fisheries Service was involved. The marine mammal community came together. Atlantis was a big contributor to that. We quickly put together temporary harborside ocean pen facilities. It was engineered so well, we use that facility to this day for our animal rescue and care center for beached animals that are stranded throughout the Bahamas. But of course, transporting these animals requires a tremendous amount of coordination. You have to charter aircraft, you have to conduct transports to airports with the animals that were scattered out in about five different oceanariums, from New Jersey to Philadelphia, to Gulfport, Mississippi. A variety of different facilities had animals placed within their extra holding capacity. So we had to coordinate getting those animals on one aircraft at one time and over here to the Bahamas. We had to plan very carefully, build customized stretchers for each animal, build customized transport units that are actually filled with water. They are with people that they know, their trainers sitting beside them. They feel very comforted. We had to coordinate veterinarians. Water exchange during the flights had to happen. And all of this has been done by folks with a lot of experience. One of the interesting aspects of it is these are sea level creatures, so they're not used to any altitude. So you have to pressurize cabins, which creates a lot of friction and drag on the aircraft and increases the cost of that fuel, which is very, very expensive to do it. But there was really no money in the world that was gonna prevent us from doing the right thing for those animals. The Katrina Dolphins arrived here in January of 2006. I just remember us having to get them accustomed to the habitat that we had for them. And I remember us having to actually do some medical workups. Some of them were still dealing with health issues after the hurricane. They seemed to acclimate fairly quickly because right away two or three of them were pregnant. And by the next year, we had three calves born. So that's an indicator that animals are behaving in a healthy manner. They're feeling comfortable enough to reproduce. They're getting enough good quality care and calories each and every day. And they have a very clean, safe system in which to feel comfortable enough to raise a family. Since the Katrina Dolphins got here in 2006, they have had 12 calves. It does make me proud to know that when I came in, the condition the dolphins were in, and seeing those same Katrina dolphins where they are now, it makes me extremely proud to know that I was part of that love and care that brought them back to where they are now. I've been working with dolphins so long, I sometimes take for granted what an emotional impact it is to have a wild animal that wants to connect with you. And when that happens, often there's a big emotional release from people. They're either giddy with excitement or some people even are moved to tears. But it's inspiring to see animals of this size, up close like this, who want to interact with you in a very fun way and kind of communicate with you in, in the way they know how to. And that's through their behavior, through their actions, and through this window of the world that we provide people.